welcome back to another video right here on Free Will Photos. Today, I am going to use Super Select AI only to edit this image. Now, this isn't a tool that I use on a regular basis, but we're just gonna go for it because I wanna see roughly how fast I can edit an entire image the way that I would like to edit using Super Select AI. So, if you're not familiar with Super Select AI, this is a masking tool that is located over on the left side of on one photo raw and it's this little wand you could access it by hitting the letter k or you could do what i'm doing which is just clicking it now on the channel you've seen me use the quick mask ai brush this is essentially that exact same brush the only difference is this is just the masking tool that allows you to select certain areas of your image and then you can apply an adjustment to just that area Instead of having to select the effect from the drop down menu over here on the right hand side, you just apply it by hovering over and selecting. So first thing that I want to do is work on my background. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to select the person here. So hovering over him, he turns blue and then I'm just going to click and I'm going to make sure that I have pretty much everything that makes him a part of this image selected, highlighted in blue. And I'll even select his rod just because what I'm thinking about doing here, this should be selected. And you can also zoom in to get more precise because there's a little crosshair and inside of that crosshair is a little circle. I want to put that circle right on the thing that I want to mask. And you can see it does a pretty good job at finding all of the things that should be in the mask. So that's what I want. I'm going to hit command and zero. That'll be control and zero on a windows keyboard. And this is my selection as it stands right now. Now, the next thing that I need to do is choose if I want to paint my effect into the person or away from the person. Now, for me, I want to paint this away from the person because I want to darken the background. And the way that I do that is I can come up here to erase and then I get to choose my adjustment. I always work a little bit backwards when I'm using Super Select AI. And the reason for that is I always want to be sure that I targeting the areas that I want to target. So I don't want this darkening effect to go on my subject here, which is why I selected a race. And then I'm going to come over to apply and I'm just going to choose the adjustment filter. Now, what ends up happening is this is going to paint a negative exposure adjustment because that's just the default of the adjustment filter into the background. And you can see if I click on the mask over here and hit the letter O, you can see it painted my subject out pretty well. And I'm not overly concerned about this. Now, this is probably too aggressive of a negative exposure. So I'll pull that back up just a little bit. And then it's always good to check this before and after. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn this off and turn it on just so I can see what's happening in the image. Now, he is separated a little bit better from the background, but I feel like the background could probably use a little bit of cooling off. So that way he's a little bit warmer than the background. So I'll just go ahead and pull my color temperature. I'm going to pull it way down just to show you the extremes and then just back that off until it gets to a point where it looks more believable and natural. Like this right here looks more believable and natural. And then one of the other things that I like to do with my backgrounds when I'm trying to isolate a subject is pull down on the saturation. So I'm going to make the background a little bit more muted and that's going to help the main character or my subject stand out just a little bit more. So it's worth trying out on your own images Here's the before and here's the after. Now, I'm not done with this image, but that was the first step that I wanted to take with editing the image. So now I'm going to go back to Super Select AI. And this time what I want to do is add in a little bit more 
contrast on my main subject. He looks uh, relatively soft focused and I want to make sure that he has more contrast on him and that's like a perceived sharpness. So I'm going to select just him. This time I'm not going to worry about the fishing rods because those aren't as important. And I'm going to come up here to my adjustments because I already have this set to paint. And then I'm going to come up here where it says adjustments. And I want to add in dynamic contrast. Now, these are all of the filters that are located inside of On One, and you have them in alphabetical order. So just keep that in mind. I'm just going to go ahead and select dynamic contrast. And what I've been experimenting with is adding in Surreal and then backing that off with the opacity slider. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull down on the opacity slider until this gets a little bit more reasonable. And I think that that looks pretty good right there. Now, the reason why I enjoy using dynamic contrast is because at the bottom of it, I'm just going to minimize some of these things at the bottom of it. I have a vibrant slider so I can click on the vibrant slider and this is going to help me with getting some of that color back in the subject. So now the subject is starting to pop off of the screen in a way that I wasn't seeing him pop off before. So if I turn this off and turn it back on, you can see the subject is looking a little bit better. So the last thing that I'll probably do with this image is throw on a big softy vignette. So this doesn't necessarily qualify as using super select, but it's just weird to mask in a vignette. So I'm just going to go ahead and add on a big softy and then I'll pull the brightness back up because I don't need it to be a very heavy vignette and we'll pull this over just a little bit more like so. And so now here's the before and here's the after. Now, this is my base image where I think I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with where it's at. But if I wanted to go one step further, I can add in a glow, which is a lot of fun. And I'm just going to put this underneath my vignette so that way it doesn't impact the vignette. And this is going to cover the entire image. So I'll just go ahead and pull this up just a bit. And then I'll pull up on the halos just to soften everything up. And now I'm starting to see that maybe the image is just a little too dark. So I have two ways of working with that. I can check to see if the vignette is the cause of it, which the vignette does add to it, but not the main cause. So I'm going to come over here to the develop tab and I'm going to pull up on exposure just a little bit. Maybe even open some of the shadows, pull back on my highlights just to control things, and then maybe add in some more vibrance to the entire image. Now, one of the most overlooked sliders inside of On One is this reduce vibrance on skin. So when you pull up on the vibrance, obviously it's impacting the entire image, but if you don't want it in the skin, then clicking this little circle right next to there, you can see what it does. I'm just going to pull vibrance up completely and then I'm going to turn this off and turn it on. And you see how it just pulls that back a little bit in the skin. It's not perfect, but if you add in a lot of vibrance to your image, you can definitely preserve some of those skin tones without getting them too heavily saturated or vibrant. And I think right around here is probably good. So let's go ahead and take a look at the before and after. This is the before and this is the after. Again, I think it is still a little too dark. So we'll come back to local and we'll bring up the backdrop here. And I think that that looks pretty good. Photo editing is just a series of back and forth, but working inside of On One, everything is non-destructive. You can turn effects off and on and really just explore 
with using different types of looks on your images. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, smash the like button, consider subscribing if you're new. And if you wanna pick up On One Photo Raw, consider using the link in the description box below. It's an affiliate link, which means if you use it, I do make a commission at no extra charge to you. I greatly appreciate everyone who supports the channel in that way. Now, if you wanna learn more about using On One Photo Raw for your specific needs, then consider signing up for a training call down in the description box below. That'll be a one-on-one -on -one call with me where I help walk you through using On One Photo Raw for your projects. If you got questions about On One, leave them in the comment section. Until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.